This video has been sponsored by Trade Coffee. Now guys, at the end of each year, like a lot of YouTubers, I like to go back and reflect on some of the videos that worked, maybe some that didn't work as well, and some that may have brought some of you to the channel for the first time. Now, without a doubt, one of my most popular videos was Claire's Hot Pockets that I made a few months ago. You guys really seem to enjoy that one, and I'm assuming that's how a lot of you found me. As kind of an ode to that video, I decided what better way to end the year than to do Claire's Pizza Rolls, which is a very similar recipe. It could be kind of a full circle moment. That was until I procrastinated around the holidays, and it is now the first week of January, so... Better late than never, I seem to say quite frequently on this channel, so let's get right into this one. Now guys, I have a feeling that the ingredients as well as the process of this recipe will be very similar to those Hot Pockets that I made. But before we can jump into that, I have to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Trade Coffee. Now I'm sure, like a lot of you guys, a vital part of my daily morning routine is a freshly brewed cup of coffee to get my day started on the right foot. And let me tell you, there is no better way to do that than to get yourself familiarized with Trade Coffee. Trade has partnered up with 50 of the nation's best roasters to provide you guys with over 400 different types of coffee. Just like I did, you can go onto their site and take their personalized coffee quiz where they can match you with the perfect brand of coffee for the way you brew it and how you want to taste it. Once completed and I received my personalized coffees, I got right to brewing them. These things are roasted to order, meaning this will be some of the freshest coffee you have ever tasted. And best of all is the pricing. You will not find a better deal for coffee of this quality. And you guys know by now that I do not partner up with just anybody. I have to be passionate about the brand and they have to be giving you some kind of hookup. I've already explained to you how much I love the coffee, but today they are giving the first 100 people 30% off their first bag of coffee. So do yourselves a favor, click the link in the top line of the description, go take that personalized quiz, and join me in the ascension to coffee heaven. Now that you guys have your breakfast sorted for the new year, we can get into today's lunch, Claire's Pizza Rolls. If you'd like to make them at home, grab yourself some mineral water and unbleached whole wheat flour, some bread flour and San Marzano tomatoes, mozzarella cheese, black pepper, red wine and olive oil, kosher salt, dried oregano, crushed red pepper flakes, some pork shoulder and room temperature water, tomato paste, fresh garlic, fresh Parmesan cheese, smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, fennel seeds, regular paprika, active dry yeast, and some fresh basil. That may seem like a whole bunch of stuff to make a pizza roll, and it is, you are correct, but it's also because I'm going to make my own sourdough bread starter, which I have never done before. If I had a choice, I would not be doing this. I called every bakery around me to see if they had some, None did, so I am making some. If you aren't familiar, it's basically just equal parts of water and flour, um, and it basically sits out for a couple days until it forms some bacteria and yeast. It's kind of like a natural leavener. Instead of using a chemical baking soda or baking powder, you basically make this and allow it to eat the bacteria out of the air. Now I let that container work for a couple days, and when it was almost ready, I started with everything else, beginning with the sauce. If I remember correctly, this sauce is an exact replica of the one that we made for the Hot Pockets. It's essentially a super concentrated marinara sauce where we're going to blend the basil and the garlic right in with the tomatoes at the end. And to concentrate it even further, it gets baked for an hour, so any last drip of water will be evaporated. Once that mix was completely cooled down, I threw it in my new food processor because the last one broke after just one time of using it. I forgot what brand it was. If you guys remember, don't buy that brand. It's garbage. Anyways, now we are going to start on our homemade sausage, which is completely made from scratch. Uh, we have done this once before, so I already have a meat grinder. While the components were freezing, I prepped everything that we're going to need. If you are new to the channel and you don't know, I put every recipe that I recreate down in the description if you want to go check out the exact ingredients and the exact measurements of each one. 
Now that that is all prepped and out of the way, I started to grind my pork, which I'm kind of curious as to why we didn't toss with that spice and fresh garlic. I believe we did that the last time I made sausage, but not this time for whatever reason. So if somebody knows why, let me know in the comments, please. This thing low-key still scares me too. This is only the second time I've used it and I keep having an irrational fear of like my finger somehow getting stuck in it. Sorry to put that image in all your heads, but I just, I can't help myself. Our sausage meat was coming together rather well after the garlic, all those spices, and then some of the red wine was added in. Now you guys know I love Claire and the whole Gourmet Make series, but this is one of my biggest pet peeves about some of these videos. The recipe starts by calling for two pounds of pork shoulder, grind it up and mixed with everything you just saw. Then she says to cook off a half pound, so only a quarter of that raw mix, into patties, and then only chop up 100 grams of the pork you just cooked. In other words, the end recipe only calls for one-tenth of the original pork mixture that you started with. I just don't get it. It hurts my brain. I also understand that's first world problems, but let me rant a little bit. Now that I settle down, we can chop up some of our low moisture mozz, which is very important because you don't want that fresh mozzarella juice seeping everywhere. And then 50 grams of some freshly grated Parmesan cheese, which is a vital part of that pizza filling flavor. I laid out every single component that we would need to throw the filling mix together including 10% of our original sausage mix. Uh, and that is looking and smelling really great. So I popped it in the fridge for now and we can start to work on our dough. Surprisingly, Claire does not use a stand mixer for this recipe. She does pretty much everything by hand. I don't know why that is. I don't know if there is a huge difference in results, uh, but I've been going at this for a long time, for a number of days, so I'm gonna use a mixer. I just have to add that that sourdough starter smells so good. It's like a cross between a dark malty beer and like a fresh sourdough bread. I just want to eat it. Unfortunately, I cannot do that because I'd rather not get sick today. So once I finished kneading it, I threw it back in that same bowl and covered it up for a couple of hours until it was at least doubled in size. Once that has risen, we can begin to throw all of this together. We of course do have to roll out some strips of our dough first, which will be interesting because I've only ever used a pasta roller for pasta dough, not a kind of springy yeasted dough like this. Surprisingly, it went really well. It didn't tear or rip at all. It was really easy to maneuver. It didn't like bundle up in the roller like it does sometimes. So overall, I'm happy with where we are so far. One little teaspoon at a time, we can start to portion out our pizza ravioli, as Claire and Delaney said. Yes, this is a very long and tedious process. I feel like I'm nowhere near the end, but if it tastes anything like I remember those Hot Pockets tasting, this should all be worth it. I filled my little raviolis, crimped them, and cut them until I didn't feel like doing any more, and then threw them in 350 degree oil, until they got a nice golden brown color and started to puff up a little bit, or just started leaking and exploding in my oil. I do not wanna put a jinx on these, but fried dough is a whole lot better than baked dough usually. It's the same filling and a much thinner, crispier pastry. So I have a feeling that these are going to be incredible, so let's give them a shot. I guess I should have gotten an actual pack of pizza rolls because I really don't remember what they look like. All I know is they look pretty good and they smell amazing. They probably could have got a, a little bit more color. Eh, I don't know. I do love the surface bubbles on there though. That should give a nice crunch. Man, I, th I think I said this in the Hot Pocket one too. The smell that comes off of this filling, it's the super concentrated tomatoes, Parmesan and sausage in this case. It's just so overwhelming. Oh my god. It's not even fair how good these are. I feel like I can eat shovels worth of that filling inside. The outside of this has a really nice chew. It resembles pizza crust more than I thought it would. If you have the ingredients and the tools necessary to make these, I highly recommend that you do because I'm gonna eat this entire thing. 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. It's David underscore Seymour1. Other than that, have a fantastic weekend. I will see you right back here next time. Peace. Thanks again to today's sponsor, Trade Coffee. Remember to click that link in the top line of the description to be one of the first 100 people and get 30% off your first bag of coffee. With the M, M without the A, D Flipping burgers and my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision